welcome to Poetry of Immigrants with an added Christmas twist today. We're here to entertain you with some Christmas music and some blues, and maybe a trip back to the 60s. And uh, I'd like to introduce the Howling Hounds to you, a local group. They're making a splash. <laughs> and they all fit into Santa's sleigh today. <coughs> and I have on my right a special elf. <laughs> and I want her to tell you her name. Gemma Matthewson. Gemma Matthewson. And uh, how nice her husband drove her in the snow today. That's right. In a sleigh, <laughs> all the way here. And sitting on my left is Tom of Cromwell. And these gentlemen have been here before. I'm sure you'll notice them again. Uh, good old Lou Manzi from Stonington who's um, nice to be here. a composer, but also a poet, he tells me. He's got a poem to share today. That's wonderful, Lou. Mm -hmm. And Peter McGrame, my good friend, longtime friend, former neighbor in Madison, Concord Meadows. So here we are getting together to entertain you. And we have some wonderful, warm Christmas memories to share with you as well. Um, I'd like to start with a poem I wrote in Madison 25 years ago. And uh, it's called Agape. It's a rather serious poem for me in 1987. And I was looking out my window and I saw a huge pine tree. And uh, it was kind of an awakening for me. That's how poets work. We get an epiphany and then we try to capture it in words or music or painting. Here I am. It's in the shape of a Christmas tree. Agape, gift in a winter garden, you wait outside my window evergreen, like hope new minted in my mind. I am agog like a child as I gaze in wonder at the pattern cast into the snow. Like some angel alone at the top, mesmerized, I gaze out my open window, a ground in a vision of desert places and empty spaces in my heart. Anesthetized by a blade-like breath of pine, I inhale your spirit like a fire eater, untouched by the eternal flame. There is nothing I need do in loving you, but watch like candles lest the light go low, like a wreath on the door, like a sandcastle on the shore, like a leaf in the winter wind, and like the child watching in a window. I am awake to your love. I am agape as I glow. Thank you for embracing my shadowy self as you walk through my empty spaces and fill my desert places fully with agape. Yes, I will embrace the burning bush. Thank you. It was partly a shaped poem, which is rarely what I do, but it, uh, the Christmas tree, yeah. But it captured, captured my sentiments of Christmas that, that year. So what memories come floating back for you? Um, probably associated with music. Childhood music around the fire, maybe mm -hmm. around the piano, the spinet. You know, we used to do that too up in uh, Durham, Connecticut. So many good memories come bubbling up Caroling. at this time of year. Carol. mm -hmm. Caroling door to door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hot oh. chocolate. Mm -hmm. Hot chocolate. I had one today. <laughs> Presents. Presents. <laughs> What was the best present as a child you received, Tom? Oh, I would say the best present I received was a little robo that dad, my mom and dad gave me. And I, uh, we, our backyard went right down to a salt marsh. Uh -huh. So uh, there was rivers and whatnot, and that's where I first got into boating. And since then, I've 
done more, but that was a lot of fun when I was that age. You know? Your rowboat, yeah. Yeah, a little as rowboat. A kid. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I can tell you the worst present I ever got. Really? You know what that was? What? A jack in the box. <gasps> Once I had a jack in the box. Tell me about the jack in the box. That popped up and it wouldn't get back in the box. <laughs> oh, it no. said, there is a cack in the box and it's poking me through and through. There also is a crack in the box. And I never get a snack in the box. And sometimes I hear a quack in the box because a duck lives in there too. Complain, complain is all he did. I finally had to shut the lid. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's that actually Shel Silverstein. That's good. Uh, thank you oh, for that poem. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Gemma. You're welcome. Mm. Shel Silverstein. Wow, yeah, that's great. Great children's poet. Great children's poet. Very versatile guy, too. Yeah. Yeah. An artist, a graphic artist. He wrote many, many great songs, too. Mm -hmm. Comedic songs and just, you know, really and serious tunes also. By a boa constrictor. That's a great one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that one. So many poets gave us um, a very, very charming Christmas. And then there's the dark side, too. The loneliness, the sadness mm -hmm. um, that comes up with some memories. Yeah. So give us a song that brings some of the Christmas okay. feelings and emotions back. Thank Ready, you. Ready, Tom? Can make a little closer? So this is Christmas And what have you done Another year over And a new one just begun and So this is Christmas I hope you have fun The dear one, the old and the young, a very merry Christmas and a happy new year. Let's hope it's a good one without any. And for poor one, road is so long. And so happy Christmas for black and for white, the yellow and red one. Let's stop all the fight. So, uh, when did he write it? John, John Lennon. Lennon. I think it was in the 80s. Uh, well, I'm trying to think he, now. He, he, he passed away when he was, I think it was 1980. So I think it was somewhere in, in the uh, 
in the 70s, I think. 70s, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. so, yeah. yeah. Good old John Lennon. Yeah, oh, he, my he's gosh. quite the songwriter, yes. He keeps coming back yes. to us. I know it. You have to remember yeah. that he did, unfortunately, pass away. You know, he died this around this time of year, too, which is a very sad part yeah. of this season. Early yeah. December, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The mm-hmm. So, um, at Christmas time, we mm. seem to think more deeply about our missing loved ones. Yes. Mm-hmm. Particularly um, the older generation. Mm-hmm. In uh, the earlier show, we read a poem, A Cup of Christmas Tea. And uh, I hope you get to see it, guys, because it, uh, mm-hmm. oh, sure. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it really uh, brought a lot of childhood back. Mm-hmm. Christmas is for childhood, too, but um, the old infirm aunt in this poem who rises to meet her grandson and celebrates Christmas with him. Very heartwarming. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a couple of also well-known poets who write about Christmas time. A Child's Christmas in Wales, Dylan Thomas. Uh, Mm -hmm. Peter, you're from Wales partly, right? Oh, Scotland, I think. Yeah. Scotland. Close. My ancestors, yeah, Wales. It's close, sure. Scotland oh. and Wales. And, uh, mm-hmm. That's pretty evocative, isn't I, it? I, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not related to any marine biologist, <laughs> so I'm not, I don't know any. Oh, you don't? Uh, well, are you sure? Not, not to my knowledge, but it's just, I, I know I ar- think more, you are. more architects. I know architects. Do you? Yeah. Uh, um, I have a, no, well, why do you say Wales? Wales, because Dylan Thomas is one of my favorite poets who kicked off at 39, um, acute alcohol poisoning, yeah. um, in the Chelsea Hotel, um, and nothing could yeah. get him to stop. But wow, what a meteoric career. He wrote a play called Under Milkwood which is my favorite play of all times. Mm -hmm. And he also wrote A Child's Christmas in Wales. And uh, Gemma's got a couple of pages for for flavor for us. Okay. Kind of sets up the old country and our memories of our own ethnic backgrounds and how they celebrated Christmas in the old country. Good feeling. This is unrehearsed. Frank gave it to me uh, about an hour ago, and it's always a pleasure to just discover it again. Uh, One page is good, and I'll I'll join you on the second page. Okay. One Christmas was so much like another in those years around the Sea Town corner. Now and out of all sound, except the distant speaking of the voices, I sometimes hear a moment before sleep that I can never remember whether it snowed for six days and six nights when I was 12, or whether it snowed for 12 days and 12 nights when I was six. All the Christmases roll down toward the two-tongued sea, like a cold and headlong moon bundling down the sky that was edged at our street. And then they stop at the rim of the ice edge fishing, fish freezing waves, and I plunge my hands in the snow and bring out whatever I can find. In goes my hand into the wool white bell tongue ball of holidays resting at the rim of the carol singing sea. And out comes Mrs. Prothero and the firemen. It was on the afternoon of the day of Christmas Eve and I was in Mrs. Prothero's garden waiting for cats with her son, Jim. It was snowing. It was always snowing at Christmas. December in my memory is white as Lapland, though there were no reindeer. But there were cats, patient, cold, and callous. Our hands wrapped in socks, we waited to snowball the cats. Sleek and long as jaguars and horrible whiskered, spitting and snarling, they would slink and sidle over the white back garden walls, and the lynx-eyed hunters, Jim and I, fur-capped and moccasin trappers from Hudson Bay, off Mumbles Road would hurl our deadly snowballs at the green of their eyes. The magic world that a child creates 
lives in most of these poems and songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's do another song. I think we'll play What Child Is This next. Oh, it's beautiful. Just a great song to hear this time of year and also with the same tune as Greensleeves. And also... It's a very ancient tune from the 1500s, I believe. From the British Isles. Sure. So we're That's moving right. from Wales mm -hmm. to England. <laughs> Thank you. So, gentlemen, howling hounds, what are you up to this season? Are you um, practicing? <laughs> what are we not up to? What are you not up to? I thought your schedule was probably. We've been busy, yeah. What are you doing? Well, we're working on new tunes. We're Good. actually going to be, an uh, exciting thing for us is that we're going to be trying out for that TV show, America's Got Talent, Ooh. on Sunday. So wish us luck. Oh, at the <laughs> casino. Um, actually, it's at the Chavez Center in New York City. Oh, they say New there York. Maybe a thousand people trying out, and why shouldn't we be one of the thousand, right? Are you gonna wear your hats? No. We're gonna wear uh, snazzy outfits. Snazzy oh, outfits. Snazzy. No snazzy Christmas outfits. hats, though. We, we wish you luck. Break oh, the bag. So we're we working say. hard on that. I'll be wearing my red suspenders, Frank. Yeah. Okay. Oh. That's his trademark. I got a red patch cord, you know, to do for the occasion. For Christmas. <laughs> so you guys are multi. Multi talented. Um, I'd love to hear your poem, Lou. Well, it's not a poem that I wrote, but it's a poem that I found, oh, and great. I'd love to tell you about it. Yeah. Um, I, I especially like to go to uh, any place where I can get a bargain, of course, being a musician, you know. Yeah. So uh, I, I haunt a lot of thrift shops and uh, book sales, and I was at a book sale in Rhode Island recently, and I saw this collection of poems by an author, Helen Porter, who I had never heard of. Uh -huh. And that intrigued me, and I took a look at some of them, and I liked them, and thought it would be appropriate for the show. And then I noticed that there was a Christmas poem in here. Uh. Christmas Spirit. Wreath the outer door with holly. Light the darkened window pane. Deck the Christmas tree with tinsel. Fill the stockings once again. But forget not the sweet singing that was heard long, long ago. In the midnight, gently bringing peace, goodwill to men below. Blot out each and every grievance. Hearken then once more on high. You will hear the glad hosannas as they echo in the sky. Like the shepherds, you will follow one bright star that led the way, and you'll find the infant savior arms outstretched on Christmas day. And I really enjoyed reading that when I was at the sale, and I thought, gee, Good these choice. Great, great poems. And interesting thing about Helen Porter, I don't know if you folks have ever heard of her. I haven't. But I did a Google search, oh. and nothing. Nothing. Nothing came up with her. No. And look a at few a other published book yeah. with a, 
Uh, nice. There's even autographs Beautiful. by the author, and this is Trinity College 44, so. Wow. I was, thought it was an interesting find, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, if it's Trinity College, Hartford, then she might be local, which is. I'd uh, like to find out more about her. But a wonderful, um, a wonderful hunt. Yeah. Yeah, and search. We have so many local poets. We mm -hmm. celebrate as we celebrate you musicians, which is kind of wonderful. And they come out of the woodwork. They certainly have. <laughs> I bet you run show. into them here and there, right, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> um, Peter, did you ever write a poem? I did. I, I had, well, uh, w um, I tried writing uh, the short stories, which I, I remember I... I know yeah, well. That, that coffee yeah. Yeah. story about I, I, two guys... That's news to me. Traveling yeah. No, across. I read his long, long narrative. Yeah, I'd like to <laughs> read it. Oh, it's a narrative, all right. Let's hear it. So, Let's read it Yeah, but I, I, so I, I'm more of a songwriter. Yes, and, and, um, sure, yes. And I wrote, and I submitted this uh, poem to... Uh, I don't know if you've heard of the John Frost anthology. John Frost, maybe? I don't know. Uh -huh. But it was published in 19... 85, I think. It was called, uh, a poem called uh, The Special wow, One. Cool. <clears throat> it's a song. Um, uh. it's, it's nice. I, I um, had to change the key. My, um, my, <laughs> son, my son's a poet. Well, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, he's, he, 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 uh, he's edited a lot of. You, you know uh, my son and, and his yeah. wife out in, out in Tucson, right? They're, yeah. They're into the, the poetry and um, very much. Poetry. Yeah. He, he, he I don't know what he's there? teaching out there. Um, uh, so this is in I will, uh, social. Uh, I will see them at the end of January. Yeah, I, I, me too. I'm going to see him. Uh, oh, good. Going to, uh, yeah. He's going go back together. to Tucson. <laughs> he's and, going to New Mexico. I'm going poet. to Tucson. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> gentlemen. That's close, you know. Um, that poem uh, brought back childhood and and a childhood Christmas carol. Do you have a Christmas carol for us you can sing? Um, Frosty the Snowman, does that, that qualify? That qualifies. It's a little modern, but... Yeah, uh, sure. no, that's, uh, that's upbeat. I love him. <laughs> we like Frosty. Yeah. He was a snowman. <laughs> and we had snow today, too, huh? It was a surprise when I woke up. Just like this is a surprise. Yeah, a surprise. <laughs> Frosty the snowman was a jolly happy soul With a corn pop pipe and a button nose And two eyes made out of coal Frosty the snowman was a fairy tale they say He was made of snow but the children know He came to life one day there must have been some magic in that old silk hat they found For when they placed it on his head, he began to dance around Frosty the snowman was alive as he could be And the children say he could laugh and play just the same as you and me Frosty the snowman knew the sun was hot that day So he said let's run, we'll have some fun before I melt away Down to the village with a broomstick in his hand Running here and there all around the square Saying catch me if you can he led them down that street of town right to the traffic cop and only pushed a moment when he heard him holler stop. Frosty the snowman had to hurry on his way and the children say he could laugh and play be back again someday. Thumpity thump thump thumpity thump thump look at Frosty go Thumpity thump thump thumpity thump thump over the hills of snow Now what did one snowman say to the other snowman? Uh, I'm melting! I'm melting! Well, that could be it on a hot day, but no. One snowman said to the other snowman, I don't know about you, but I keep smelling carrots. 
<laughs> That's cute, Lou. Oh, my neighbors are going to love that. And I think, Peter, I thought you were a baritone. You're a bass. Maybe I am a bass. You are a great right? bass. to get him to sing that, higher. That uh, range went really down for you. I hadn't heard the bass voice. Oh, yeah. Good for you. Wow. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, and uh, we're going to take a three-minute break. Do watch the service <coughs> announcements. They're as good as the show, <laughs> which means they're really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you need to uh, run to the fridge, get some grog or glog or what is the Swedish drink for knock you on your tail. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back in three minutes and we'll enjoy your coming back. So don't leave us yet. We got some more eye-curling poems for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Friends. I love my sister. My heart, heart doesn't see race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Love is kind. Love is patient. I'm Howard Schwartz, Executive Communications Director at your Better Business Bureau serving Connecticut with the Consumer Moment. We now use the internet to make more purchases than ever before. But if you're looking for a business that offers trustworthy goods and services, try to stay local. Word of mouth recommendations are very helpful, but a service provider is only as good as his or her last job. Management can change, so can the employees. Always ask for references, recent references, and visit bbb.org to see what other consumers' experiences have been like. You can look up a business review or select a BBB accredited business that is devoted to our standards for trust. The bottom line is that the marketplace is in your hands. Take your time, do your research, and use your power as a consumer to get what you want. This Consumer Moment is brought to you by your Better Business Bureau serving Connecticut. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, I, there was a, I had, just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, smoke key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Welcome back. Poetry of Immigrants with the Howling Hounds, Gemma Madison Matthewson, my co-host. And uh, I'm still stuck on Madison, Connecticut. <laughs> um, I was in Tucson, speaking of the Southwest, and I had the best time going to bookstores too, Lou. And whatever 
happened that this popped up, caught my eye because of the red. But then I hang out with street musicians in Tucson who are on 4th Ave. And um, they're actually itinerant um, train musicians who roll with the cars back and really? forth to San Antonio yeah, with the guitars, wow. singing their hearts out. Mm -hmm. And they're in their 20s. And I thought, is this 1950? Yeah. Really, mm -hmm. or how how old is this 30s, tradition? Yeah. The yeah, '30s, yeah. more like the '30s. Yeah. So, boxcar sing along is what popped off the secondhand bookshelf for me, and it's all the hobo songs. Mm -hmm. It's songs for hobos and tramps, bums and boomers, wobblies and wanderers. Wobblies? What's a wobbly? Oh, that I gotta Google that, my friend. Isn't that a political thing? That's wobbly? a political yeah. thing. And wanderers, mm -hmm. riffraff, and rabble rousers. So these young itinerant musicians who are songmen, songmen, wonderful songmen, traveling the rail overnight just for a place to sleep and be safe is in the boxcar, and then coming back the next morning all the way to Tucson from San Antonio, singing their hearts out, and then going out with the hat and the, and the guitar, and I'm giving them bucks <laughs> because they're so good. Good man. <laughs> oh, man, it really gave me a huge inspiration. So they're really itinerant poets, too. I mean, they're writing sure. their own lyrics and homemade CDs. Why not? Why not? Why not? Let's take fun. Let's do it. Did you ever have a hobo period? No, no, not really. You never read no. the ro ro rode the oh, rails. I've read, been interested in it, and read about you know. But the, have you the rode stuff. the rails? No, no, never. That was my childhood fantasy. I don't know why. It was an open box car that I could jump in and go all the way to the West Coast. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. And get away from parents and uh -huh. school and rules and. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a wonderful childhood fantasy that is. And mm -hmm. one of the commercials these days. Sure. Do you know what I always thought was fascinating, too, about the hobos and a hobo lifestyle? Yeah. That they had their own secret code that they would mark on somebody's house. Mm -hmm. In other words, a way of other hobos knowing that this person might give you some money, this person might have some good food for you, this, this person, this house, in other words, they put it on the fence or something, and these signs that only the hobos knew, I guess. Right. Stay Kindly away from this place because they'll dog. try to get you arrested, you know? And oh, I love that. Yeah. The That's secret hobo. Tom yeah. was kind of a hobo. He was sleeping in sewer pipes in Las Vegas or Tucson. Was he? You like... lost your shirt. <laughs> Tom, let's hear about it. Come I on. It's more of my shirt. That's no, no. Where, 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 where was in Tucson? What were you sleeping in? A drain pipe? I don't know what it was, but it was <laughs> it was outside. Let's put it that way. Yeah. There's got to be a song you wrote over that. No, no, I never. You well, should. I did write a song called Brother, and that's about. Uh, <laughs> Some of the lyrics are, uh, we, wind, we wander down the roads of life. Uh, you know. yeah. uh, with a brother? <clears throat> with a brother, right. Oh, neat, right. Neat. Yeah. Well, I'm just going uh, hop, skip, and jump. Railroading on the Great Divide. I'm not singing it. It's lyrics, but it's Kiev, or A-D-A-A-E-E. -E. Sure. You right. want some music? Oh, yeah, sure. Kind of railroad music, buddy. Easy to read, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Railroading on the Great Divide, an old Carter family song from the 1920s. Utah Phillips popularized it once again in more recent times, using it in shows as his signature, quote, folk song, end quote. 19 and 16, I started to roam Out in the west, no money, no home I went drifting along with the tide I landed on the Great Divide Railroading on the Great Divide Nothing round me but the Rockies and sky it's there you'll find me as the years go by Railroading on 
The Great Divide. Ask any old timer from old Cheyenne. Railroading in Wyoming, the best in the land. The long steel rail and a short cross tie are laid out over the Great Divide. This book has got possibility. That was fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really, yeah. I always wanted to live in or be a hobohemian, as in bohemian. <laughs> I, I used to spend a lot of time at Greenwich Village pretending I was a bohemian. <laughs> you did? But then I would go home to my parents. Was that music? I guess a real bohemian didn't go home to their parents. No, a real no. bohemian. <laughs> but I used to pretend. Like a lot of other people, I guess. Yeah. And uh, Greenwich Village is kind of like the capital, isn't it? Oh, I mean, that's the capital of Bohemia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <I> <laughs> and whole Bohemia yeah. sometimes, because you know these indigent poets are trying to, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, trying oh, to yeah. make a living. Um, oh, see, the twenties did it for me. That was great. Thank you. Great musicality. I am ready for your poem. Oh, well, I, I guess at one point in my youth I wanted to be an artist, but this is a Christmas poem of childhood memory. It's called The Nylon Stocking Angel. This December, my granddaughter had the honor of arranging my box of angel figurines a violinist and a bagpiper, hand-carved and painted in Germany, a Yadro porcelain from Valencia strumming a lute, a Mexican pottery angel brandishing a shooting star, several Neapolitan crush replicas, random cherubim and seraphim. Her hands carefully hovered over a lumpy, misshapen heap. Should this one go up, Grammy? I am five again. My Bible is called 100 and Things to Make and Do. And my mother, with no enthusiasm toward crafting and zero tolerance for mess, permits me a rare and impatient half hour of her collaboration, sacrificing her ripped nylon stocking to stretch wings and a gown around an armature of pipe cleaners. The actual scrawny white tools for reaming the tar out of pipes, not the long plush chenille stems today. Not allowed to use permanent markers myself, I was disappointed with her minimalist rendition of a face on the button head, two dots and a slash. But I was permitted to dust an the angelic being with glitter snow all by myself. Sixty years later, rust from the pipe cleaner shows through, and the graying clumps suggest after the snowplow snow. But this is still my idea of heaven. Yes, wow. Ajika, that angel goes up because it reminds me of my mother. Kind of funny looking, huh? She helped me make it when I was five. Smiling, my granddaughter indulgently gives the tattered ancient artifact front and center pride of place. Wow. Wow, that's beautiful. There she is. There she is. What a unity in family. <laughs> yeah. She's gorgeous, though. Isn't that Really? Super? That's so special. <laughs> mm, yeah. So cute. That's, that's my crafting. Well. Thank you, Frank, for... Holding that's, that for me. That's uh, so nice to think about the Christmas tree and the, the uh, traditional railroad with cars under, you know, doot doot, mm -hmm. that little train going on. Did you guys have a, a railroad I did. toy train under the tree? Oh, yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. Sure. Oh, yeah. Did you? Yeah. Line out was line out trains, and then H -H. they would. What they I had that three three tra tracks, and then the two tracks, and then sometimes you could mix it in with the cars too. The uh -huh. I remember selling uh, Christmas cards or birthday uh, greeting cards to, and if you sold like the whole case of them, you got to get a free. Uh, 
cards yeah set, you know what i mean i yeah. forgot about that yeah you remember those th- days things yeah. like that those yeah. were fun days those huh? days yeah those were fun. great mm-hmm. um yeah. next yeah. best thing to um literally physically hopping <laughs> A freight train going oh. west is to have your own little miniature under the tree. And the imagination flourishes with that. It's like, oh, where do I want to go next? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. How about another song, gentlemen? What do you think, Peter? My favorite things? I guess that's what's on the Okay. Are we in? From the sound of music associated with Christmas, too. My favorite things. My favorite things. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank um, you. Thank you. Very mellow. Beautiful tune. And uh, it leaves me in a, a mood of understanding the <coughs> innocence of Christmas in uh, our country. It's a pretty much a gift, but around the world, there are children everywhere who are suffering and struggling at this time of year. And um, I want to hearken back to a, a better time. This is a poem by Rebecca Hazelton, and it's out of the um, poetry issue of Poetry Magazine, which has been going 112 years strong, which is marvelous. Wow, you know, it's, so long, long. it's the official rag for sure, I've poetry. Seen a few issues myself. The foundation. Um, the good in the evil world. Before the war leaned in and blew out the candles. There were many long days where lovers called themselves lovers, and a house was a dream, but also four walls, a roof. A father called to his daughter to see the monarch butterflies pausing in their migration to fan the golden rod, a tiger in each coy disclosure. A young man reached for a blackberry and found draped on a branch a green snake, the color of matcha. A snake the color of matcha sighed in the sun. People drove in cars. There were jobs and someone had to work every morning. A man quit his job, but it was no tragedy. He didn't like the work. Another man slid in and found it comfortable enough and just as easily slid in beside the man's wife and into the everyday rhythms of his life. And that was no tragedy either. After rains, A ring of mushrooms would delicately crack the earth. Spanish moss harbored red mites. The sky wasn't interesting. No one looked up. Wow. Before uh, 
the internet, yes. before the cell phones, before, before, before. Um, and that comes back to a lot of us, the earlier times and the, the peace. So the peace and joy of Christmas is still underneath everything, no matter mm -hmm. how evil the world. Mm. Mm -hmm. And thinking about the joys of Christmas and how it changes and stays the same through time, that one of the songs that always baffled every member of my family was the 12 days of Christmas when all these amazing gifts keep accruing, the, the 12 maids milking and ladies dancing and all that. The five geese. But, <laughs> but there's, a, there's an answering poem by Phyllis McGinley called All the Days of Christmas which can be true today or any day. What shall my true love have for me to pleasure his Christmas, has, have from me? What shall my true love have from me to pleasure his Christmas wealthily? The partridge, partridge has flown from our pear tree. <laughs> flown with our summers are the swans and geese. Milkmaids and drummers would leave him little peace. I've no gold ring and no turtle dove, so what can I bring to my true love? A coat for the drizzle chosen at the store, a saw and a chisel for mending the door, a pair of red slippers to slip on his feet, three striped neckties and something sweet. He shall have all I can best afford, no piper's piping, no leaping lord, but a fine fat hen for his Christmas board, two pretty daughters versed in the role to be worn like pinks in his buttonhole and the tree of my heart with its calling linnet, my evergreen heart and the bright bird in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice, pretty. What a, what a cute riff yeah. and uh, a spinning on the I idea of Christmas. Let's do, let's continue that. I've got um, a little fun here with uh, Ronald Doddle's Revolting Rhymes. Oh, well done. Let's yeah. all do about six lines each, okay? Sure. So, uh, Gemma, would you start? Sure. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. When little Press Snow White's up, mother died, the king, her father, up and cried. Peter. Oh, what a nuisance, what a life. Now I must find another wife. It's never easy for a king to find himself that sort of thing. Who's that? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, That's all right. To okay, he, he wrote to every magazine and said, I'm looking for a queen. At least 10,000 girls replied and begged to be the royal bride. The king said with a shifty smile, I'd like to give each one a trial. However, in the end, he chose a lady called Miss M Maclos. <laughs> Who brought along a curious toy that seemed to give her endless joy. This was a mirror framed in brass, a magic talking looking glass. Ah. Ask it something day or night, it always got the answer right. For instance, if you were to say, oh, Mira, what's for lunch today? The thing would answer in trice, today it's scrambled eggs and rice. Now every day, week in and week out, the spoiled and stupid queen would shout, oh, Mira, Mira on the wall, who is the fierce of them all? Oh, the mirror answered every time, Oh, madame, you are the queen sublime. You are the only one to charm us. Uh. Queen, you are the cat's pajamas. <laughs> or ten, oh, for ten whole years, the silly queen <clears throat> repeated this absurd routine. Then suddenly, one awful day, she heard the magic mirror say, From now on, queen, you're number two. Snow White is prettier than you. Ooh. The queen went absolutely wild. She yelled, I'm going to scrag that child. Excuse me. I'll cook her flaming goose. I'll skin her. I'll have her rotten guts for dinner. <laughs> she called the huntsman to her study. She shouted at him, listen, buddy. 
You drag that filthy girl outside and see you take her for a ride. Thereafter, slit her ribs apart and bring me back her bleeding heart. The huntsman dragged the lovely child deep, deep into the forest wild. Fearing the worst, poor Snow White spank folk. She cried, oh please, give me a break. The knife was poised, the arm was strong. She cried again, I've done nothing wrong. The huntsman's heart began to flutter. It melted like a pound of butter. He murmured, okay, beat it, kid. And you can bet your life she did. Later, the huntsman made a stop within the local butcher shop. And there he bought, for safety's sake, a bullock's heart and one nice steak. Oh, majesty, oh, queen, he cried, the rotten little girl has died. And just to prove I didn't cheat, I brought along these bits of meat. The queen cried out, bravissimo, I trust you killed her nice and slow. <laughs> then this is the disgusting part, the queen sat down and ate the heart. I only hope she cooked it well. Boiled heart can be tough as hell. <laughs> well, all of this was going on. Oh, where, oh, where had Snow White gone? Oh, boy. Oh, thank you, gentlemen. Okay. That was fun. This was mm -hmm. so good for the kitties by great. the fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one? Gentlemen. Wow. Give us a send-off song. Thank you for watching the Poetry of Immigrants. The Howling Hounds will continue. for Christmas oh boy I I just want one I you know it's sad to say I just want peace you know peace 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 amen we, brother we, you know what I mean? amen That's, brother you know just feel that and peace and people getting along and and getting together <clears throat> how about you Frank what do you, what do you like for Christmas um, gratitude mm -hmm. in my heart because I've recently become aware of how each minute of each day is a, a total miracle. For me, I'm 76 and saying thank you for good health, um, happiness, and uh, I think I'd like to go out the way that ailing aunt in the poem, A Cup of Christmas Tea does, with her spirit on fire even in a um, crippled and diminished body. Um, that poem is still, still bouncing it. around inside me. Oh, I'm so glad we read it. Yeah. So to all the uh, ancestors and uh, forebears and relatives who came before us who taught us the way, yeah, let's practice gratitude each day by being actively generous to the neighbor. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Frank. You guys are heartwarming. 
Thank you. And, uh, Thank you, you for having us, Frank. Thank Frank. Thanks. You did a good job with the queen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mirror, mirror. <laughs> do jingle bells, right? Is, are we still going? Yeah, we're still going. Oh, yeah. jingle, jingle bells. bells? Yeah. <laughs>